We are broadcasting live from the studios of BCTV Channel 18. Have with me today many people in the studio who are concerned. If you are watching us today, the reality is, is that by next Wednesday, and again, this is live, by next Wednesday, this station could be off of the air. There's a lack of funding, and we have many things to discuss within the next hour. But if you will get a pen, I will give you a number to call. We need your assistance, and I just need to give you the, the reason we're here and where we need your assistance so that as we go through the broadcast, you can call someone and let them know that the situation at Channel 18 BCTV is being discussed right now live. What is happening, and I need to kind of just tell you what happens with public access and who funds public access. Those of you who are watching us right now are the persons who keep Channel 18 on the air. The reason is when you pay your cable bill, TCI gives a portion of your cable bill to the city of Buffalo. The city of Buffalo then gives the a person or a group that has been chosen by them the authority to run public access. I know that you have heard a lot in the press that stated that this was tax money and that tax money was being abused or misused in some ways. This is your cable bill money. What, what has happened, and, and I just want to, I, without mentioning names, because as I, I spoke, many of you saw um, our show on Sunday in which we talked about this. Um, there's a board of directors of which I'm only a member of that board of directors, but because I feel so strongly about about public access in Buffalo and anywhere so that any person is able to speak about how they feel on the air. The Board of Directors of Public Access did a had an audit done because the board felt that something was wrong. I know that it seems as if uh, that many people believe that uh, we were ordered by the city to have an audit, but truly the board of directors felt that something might be wrong. And I will not share in this next hour, I will not share any name of any employee of BCTV. What I will share is the information that we received from an auditor. Basically, what happened was, according to the auditor's report, and that we have our own private auditor, and the auditor states, during our audit, we brought to your attention numerous transactions that appear to be improper involving an employee. The transactions in question appear to start in November of 1995. Now I make that point because a great majority of the persons, including myself, who are on the board of directors have been there for a year or less. As, as, I, as I read an official document, it states these things started in November of 1995 when a certain person was named executive director and lasted until the employment was terminated in July of 1997. Again, please understand, this board of directors is the one that ordered the audit and the one that made the termination. What has happened in the meantime is that the cable money that you, that you pay and the money that goes to the city of Buffalo is now being held up because of certain things that the CATV committee of the Common Council wanted us to do in order to show that we were still a viable organization. The first thing that they asked us to do was to come up with a policies and procedures manual. The policies and procedures manual was completed. The policies and com procedures manual in emergency meeting was ratified and was handed in to the Common Council. That has been completed. When we met again with the CATV committee, the CATV committee then further stated that they wanted an independent person to handle the finances of BCTV. Understand, we are full in full agreement with that. So what happened was we went into receivership with James Amato and company who will be taking over the finances of BCTV. Those things were completed. In the meantime, the Fillmore District Council person decided that he wanted what is called an RFP. Mr. Franzak, the Honorable Franzak, wanted an RFP, which is a request for proposal. The, on tomorrow, Tuesday, there will be probably issued an RFP. 
they will ask that persons who are interested in running Channel 18 to step forward with a proposal. Now understand, my problem here today has nothing to do, or my, my position here today has nothing to do with an RFP being issued. Our position stands on the fact that in the last three months, we have not received any funding and that every employee of Channel 18, everyone who has been here, including myself who is a volunteer board member, have been here without any money. We have had persons who have worked overtime to keep your shows on the air. Now I don't know what your favorite show is and later in this hour I'm going to be reading off some of the shows but regardless of whether it is a church show, regardless of whether it's a community show, regardless of whether it's a dance show, your shows have gone on by volunteers. Right now me being able to go on live is, is because there are people here in the studio volunteering. So the money that is sitting in the city coffers right now really should come to BCTV. And what we are asking for, and you will hear me ask this throughout our conversation with our guests, is that the city of Buffalo, if they're going to issue an RFP, grant it. But that cable public access would not lose one day. The last time, and I have Charles Alexis in the studio with me who's going to talk about that in a few minutes, but the last time that public access with Sunship was in charge lost, it was two years before we had public access again. That means two years your church will be off the air. Two years your community show will be off the air. Two years your council person will be off the air. And if you do not help us tonight, the real situation is, is the only persons that we have to blame is ourselves. Channel 18 and those who give us the money are elected officials. If we as the constituents say we want Channel 18 to stay on the air and not lose one day, they will respond. I want to give you a number to call right away. Please do not tie up our phones. Just call. I want you to tell me two things. If you are committed to keeping this on the air, I want you to give us a call at 838 0227. Now listen before you call. I need your name and I'm going to read it right now over the air. And I need who you will call. Will you call your council person? Tell me. I'll call Beverly Gray. I'll call whomever it is. Or if you will call Council President Pitts. I'll call Council President Pitts. I want you to say my name is John Smith and I will call such and such. That's what I need from you right now. 838 0227. Five. I'm sorry, 838-0225. And I'm going to read over the air those persons who are committed to public access. The phone is ringing now. 838-0225. Some of you have elected certain people. Some of you have been out there on the election trail. Now is the time that the city of Buffalo has to stick together. I'm not worried about who took what from wherever. That is now in the hands of the district attorney. And it is up to the district attorney to say who is guilty and who is not guilty. But I need the city of Buffalo at large to call me and say, I, I need you to call between 9 a.m. tomorrow and 10 a.m. tomorrow, City Hall, and say, we don't want to lose public access. My name is John Smith. I'm going to call Councilman uh, Gray. I'm going to call Councilman Brown. I'm going to call Council President Pitts. I don't want to see it lost. Give me a call here, 838 Zero two two five. Now, with us today in the studio is Charles Alexis, and I, I, I Charles, I, I'll be very honest. I, I did not understand some of the time uh, the 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 passion that you had for public access. Um, I almost uh, I was confused, and after talking with Charles, and I realized that Charles has been here. You said since Sunship. Yes. So you have a lot of history. Yes. Can you right. share with us some of that history, Charles? Well, I've been a member since like 1988. And um, up until a couple of years, like 1990, there were some problems, internal problems, and also some external problems that were sort of uh, encroaching upon Sunship, which, which is very similar to what's going on now. Mm -hmm. That's why it's uh, really become a passion of mine, because mm -hmm. I see the same thing happening. I see history repeating itself, and mm -hmm. those, who are, those who tend to forget history are condemned to relive it. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, that's the situation we're in right now. And um, what happened after we went off there in 1999, we were off for two years. Two years. Two years without public access television. Mm -hmm. And it was very difficult. We had to go to other outside organizations and mm -hmm. pay money out of our own pockets. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people aren't aware of the fact that public access television is free. I mean, there's mm -hmm. no charge to you whatsoever. You just buy your tapes and put mm -hmm. it on the air. Mm -hmm. But in other places you might have to go to in the community, you have mm -hmm. to rent equipment, you have to rent the lights, and the microphone, it all adds up, and you have mm -hmm. to pay for editing time. But here it's free. And uh, again, as I was saying, you know, it, it was a, a tremendous blow to us all that 
that we had to be a couple of years without our mm -hmm. public access television. And now we're in a situation right now, I understand tomorrow is going to be, I guess, D-Day. Yes. A very important um, yes. decision to be made down in City Hall, the yes. chambers on in City yes. Hall. And uh, we, we want to make sure that we convey to the powers that be and also to the general public uh, overall that, you know, we are uh, concerned. We mm -hmm. are the, what you have right here are producers and board members sitting right here tonight, you know, talking to you concerning public access television. And we do not want to repeat history like we did back in mm -hmm. 1990 for losing mm -hmm. the facility for two years off the air. And uh, you know, that, was a, that was a terrible loss. Charles, can you remember when again. it happened? I mean, when we got to about this point, was there a lot of public uh, support? Well, there were there were some. I mean, the, the media, as usual, came by. The electronic media and the print media came by, and they covered the story in the newspaper. But I think right now, technically, to some to some extent, we're much better off. We're much better organized than we were back mm -hmm. then and there because of the fact that we have this forum right now tonight. Mm -hmm. We didn't mm -hmm. have this back in 1990 with mm -hmm. the situation. Okay. And I, I like to commend you personally and the other people involved for bringing us together. That really does show a passion and concern mm -hmm. on your part and on parts of other people. But I think Sometime right now. Sometimes I don't know why, Charles. I, I keep yeah. talking about. I've got right now sitting at home three kids. And it's like, why am I doing this? But I, I think, and, and, and I, I, I don't want to blow you up as being this angel, but I, huh. what happened was I didn't understand a lot of times what your passion was. I didn't understand you had been here before right. and didn't want to see it happen again. A so. lot of people dismiss me as a, as a kook. You know, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we didn't, we didn't say kook. No. A lot of, a lot of them <laughs> And, you know, uh, that, it was very frustrating for me because I've seen mm -hmm. this stuff happen before. And there are some individuals I won't name right now who actually went through Sonship along mm -hmm. with me and they mm -hmm. know better and you know it's like the only reason why I voted for some individuals as president of a certain guild is mm -hmm. because of the fact that I said well this person knows what we've been through before mm -hmm. with Sonship and so naturally they're in a position where they can educate us all as to what to do concerning this but unfortunately I mm -hmm. mean I don't know if it's appropriate to air so called dirty laundry but I think some, just like any other organization mm -hmm. some people have their own agenda right. and unfortunately right. that just and causes the towards, right. the, towards, towards the demise of this organization right you know and and, you know, what we're doing here is we're just trying to, you know, ex express, especially to the powers that be, mm -hmm. again, in, in a general public, that we do have a very valid concern mm -hmm. for public access television. And it would be a tremendous loss for, you know, everybody in this community if we went without television, especially for two years, even yes. for a, a month or a day or so yes. is, is a chore. But, right. man, for two years, we can't, can't go we through that We don't want to go through it again. No, and we don't want that. And, 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 and I, I'm, I'm, again, let me give this number for you to call. I want you to give us a call as soon as as possible right now at 838 zero I'm sorry 0225 I believe it's on the screen now 838 0225 tell us your name and which council person you will call in the morning because the council goes come on I got my runners bringing bring them in bringing these because phones are ringing off the hook 838 0225 tell us which council person you will call in the morning I'm going to call somebody I want to thank you right now Norman Sanders for calling and you you're going to call uh, it says 1125 I'm not sure what that means but thank you Norman for calling we want to thank Rosalind Peeler. She says she's going to call the council president. Thank you, Rosalind. Please make sure you call in between 9 and 10. Let them know you want public access not to lose one day. Uh, we, we thank you for Betty Allen, who's going to call James Pitt's office in the morning. Thank you for council uh, council, Barbara, council member Barbara Miller Williams called our office. I'm not sure what that means, so I'm not <laughs> saying that Barbara called, but if it is you, Barbara, uh, okay. thank you. Um, and if I, I, I invite any, uh, I invite Barbara, if that's you, to call back, and I'm going to see if I can get you on live, if that is Barbara. Uh, Sheila Richardson from the University District is going to call her council person. I need some Fillmore districts here now. Um, and Jeffrey, I think this is Quint Jeffrey. Um, I'm not sure. I'm sorry if I, if I who is that? Quentin Jeffrey. Quentin Jeffrey is if, if from the Maston District. You're going to call your council person, uh, Council Member Brown, uh, in the morning, 9 to 10. I want to flood those lines. I want you to say, we don't want that to happen again. If someone stole from BCTV, let the district attorney handle it. But to take away public access from the city of Buffalo is a dangerous thing. Let me say this before I go to the next person. And, and those of you who are here, after I get everybody in 
introduce, we're all going to chime in all the way through. Um, but in the morning on radio station WUFO 1080, I will be on live out of my pocket. I will be paying for airtime live on WUFO at on 1080 AM to talk about public access and to get people to call their council persons in between 9 and 10 o'clock. Public access 9 o'clock in the morning. Please listen to 1080 AM WUFO. Um, now, I want to talk just again a little bit about uh, the remedies that we have come up with. And one was this policy manual in which we were asked to do. And we have also done a lot of changes here at Channel 18 to make sure that your, your, your show um, is, stays on the air. And we have with us another board member. Now, let me say this about the board. The board that is currently right now running Channel 18. Again, the majority have not been here since 1995. So we inherited already a baby that was already being birthed. But the panel that, that the, the board members that continue to run this station are very dedicated to what is going on. Some of us are producers, some are not producers, some are just very passionate. And in all respect, I must speak about an article that was in the paper uh, just a few days ago that said whistleblowers put off of the board. The only thing I want to say about that is that every board member is very passionate about Channel 18. No one was put off of the board because they were a whistleblower. We need this organization to move on and to move on now. And so I want to make it very plain that we don't feel we have any whistleblowers because to be honest, we were all here when everything happened. So to be a whistleblower means we're blowing the whistle on our own selves. So uh, for that, uh, that's where I want to leave that. That that uh, that that was totally erroneous. Eight three eight zero two two five is the number to call 838-0025 is the number 02 goodness I'm going to get this right before this hour is up 838 zero two two five it would help if I had on my glasses all right we're glad to have with us another producer uh, who is here right now but David Allen um, he has uh, one of the liveliest shows I always talk about on on, on David's show uh, David has some of the stars now Dave I've seen like like stars on your show and I, I thought this was like being done in California somewhere but this was being done by the usage of BCTV is correct. that correct? That's correct. Dave, David is on the board of directors um, you've been on the board for how long? Um, not even six months. Alright. Um, I'm one of the newly uh, elected members mm -hmm. appointees mm -hmm. uh, to the board. You're appointed by whom Dave? Uh, the controller of okay. Buffalo. Okay. And um, the passion I have for BCTV, I've been here since the doors opened mm -hmm. in, in 91. Mm -hmm. That's how long my program has been okay. airing. So you got as much experience right. as Charles. Okay. And, and my thing is um, to see public access go down like it has, it's really uh, a tragedy. Mm -hmm. Because anywhere else you would go uh, to play your program, you would have to pay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I have some of the fees here right in front of me just for a 30 minute program. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking about $150. So, and, and I hope the audience understands that because yeah. we often get a lot of people who say, how much is it for my church to go on? How much? It's nothing. You just have to come in and do your tape. That's and people don't do. understand that. It is nothing. You can come on this station for free. Now, if you want to go to paid access, that's, that's what's going to happen. Dollars. All right. And I'm, I don't know about you, but I can't afford to. Look, I, I pastor a church that can't, we can't afford $150. Okay. I put it in, we, <laughs> we, we've been blessed, but we, we, we definitely want to stay on the air and we don't do it. Let me say this in between you talking. Okay. I want to thank Kara Essex. You just called. You're going to call Council Member Pitt's office. I want to thank Chris Frazier. You just called. Um, you're going to call Council Member Pitt's office. Kimberly Robinson is going to call Barbara Miller Williams' office. Lewis Douglas in the Maston District is going to call Byron Brown's office. Tamara, um, Tamara, I don't want to say it. Wallace. Qualis, uh, is going to call the University District. Jamie McLean calling the Maston District. Well, the calls are still coming in. Listen, Faye Hutchinson calling the Maston District. Finally, I got somebody in Fillmore. I need you to call Fillmore. Mm -hmm. DJ Cross calling the Fillmore District. Keep those calls coming. The phone number is 838-0225. Go ahead, Dave. Okay. Now, when I first started, and I was back with Sonship, I came in 
at the tail end um, of Sonship, and we were doing a uh, program called City Rhythm. Mm -hmm. And that's when things really started turning. And when we start producing really good programs, mm -hmm. that's when they pulled the plug on us. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and that was right, the old administration. The old, okay. old um, Sonship. Mm -hmm. And now to come here and see this kind of revamp itself again, mm -hmm. it really you know puts a, a damper on my heart mm -hmm. because I know how hard some of the people here have worked mm -hmm. to keep public access going. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know what goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of technical yes, things sir. that goes on here. Yes. And um, to see the doors close, it would be a tragedy. Yes, just, I, just work. I agree. I, I mean, I think the same thing Charles had talked about is uh, in two years. I mean, I, was there any public access on at all, Charles, when the two years went by? Anything uh, the way it was structured, it was not really what you call a, a, an open door policy that we currently have right now, where you can actually come down here, drop your tapes off, and get service. I mean, we had to literally just take our tapes and just put it through a back door over mm -hmm. at TCI, and, and that's the way not. that's the way they treat us, like a wow. like a stepchild, really. <laughs> How did you get your tape back? Well, normally I think at the end of the week we finally got our taste back. It was it was a chore, it was a hassle. They mm -hmm. made it difficult. Sorry, TCI, but they they mm -hmm. made it difficult for us. They were not a friend of ours. And mm -hmm. the way things are now, the, w the way things have been going for for the past couple of years, that has been an open door policy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know we took a lot of that for granted. And I tell you, when we went off the air, like Dave was saying, the price of the, of the production, I, was, I started looking into myself. I said, Oh my gosh, I didn't I didn't realize how good mm -hmm. we had it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I look at the prices now. It's just forget it. You know, and, and it was free. It yeah, it was, no. it was a free situation. It's free now. I and the, the people who saw understand viewers the people who suffer in this um, is definitely the city of Buffalo that's right my right. concern here is not about which board runs Channel 18 I, I need that to be real plain mm -hmm. is that this is not some type of self-serving issue that I'm on this television to see I don't care if B cam BC TV who cam why cam runs public access my concern is that not one day is lost and the reality is is more than likely by next Wednesday we have to shut down. The bills continue to rise. The phone bill, the staff will not stay past next week unless we know that some funding is going to happen. I'm going to be talking to somebody else who's here at our table who has like one of the, another top-notch show in this city and, and it means a lot to everyone. But let me give you the number again. The number to call is 838 838 838-0225. 0225. I'm just trying to find my camera now. Am I on the two? <laughs> all right. 838-0225. Call. I've got all of these names that are coming in here. Just bring them on over. I'm not even going to try to hide them. You're calling. And some of you people who your, your pastor is on, call me and tell me I'm from St. John and I want my pastor to stay on. Call and say I'm from True Bethel I don't want, and I want my pastor to stay on. Call and say I'm from the Sickle Cells Association I want that to stay on or whatever it is. Now, let me, let me give you the number one more time. 838 Zero two two five. If you like any of these shows, uh, self -advo advocacy today. Wow, I can barely get that out. <laughs> Sports small talk just went off the air. If you like that show, you need to call in because the reality is, by next Wednesday, you might not be watching it anymore. Madai Magazine, Aging and You, Western New York Tonight, Business of Buffalo. Uh, we got one called Those Two Black Guys. Check this out. I know people constantly say, "Public guy says all they show is weddings, all they show is garbage." That's what it's here for. You can show whatever you want to. And those of you who are watching and never knew that, you can do it. I'm telling you. You can still come down. But if it's gone, you won't be able to do anything. Um, St. John, which comes on the television. Those of you who go to St. John, if you want to continue seeing BW on the air, you need to make that call to the Common Council in the morning. Or else you might just be seeing your pastor at home. And that's sad for those who are sick and shut in and need this medium. They need to watch. They want to watch it. And those of you who are sick and shut in, call that council person who you voted for tomorrow in the morning. You can't wait until the afternoon in there in chambers. You got to call in the morning and say, listen, I'm sick and shut in. I've been watching such and such show. I don't want to see it lose one day. Those of you who watch... Uh, Give me some pro our Eve for uh, those of you who, who watch the, the deputy speaker. The deputy speaker has a lot of pull, but one of the parts that he does not have pull is if we go off the air, he's going to have to go to another station. If you appreciate the deputy speaker's report, call that number, 838 
855-838-0225. If you want to call and you want to challenge somebody, challenge a church, challenge an organization to make that call too, you do that and we'll give you the time. want to thank, uh, calls are still coming in. Ada Jones is going to call uh, Councilman Franzak. Uh, Greg, thank you, Ada, finally. Yeah, yeah, I, I hope really you get along well with it. We need, we really, we need we really need people to call the Fillmore District. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially Definitely. Franzak. Definitely. And uh, Ms. Uh, Kavanaugh, I think about Cap Bar All of them. We need yeah. call because all of them. Uh, the RFP the has been yeah. issued yeah. by Franzak. And I understand. Believe mm -hmm. me, this is not a get even type of thing. I understand their concern. Our only concern is that this station stays on the air. Greg Ashley is going to call Councilman Helfler's office. Thank you, Greg. David Shivens is going to call Beverly Gray. Uh, and he's going to call. He's not only calling one, he's calling two. Mm -hmm. Thanks, David. Uh, he's calling Beverly Gray and the Maston District Council person, Byron Brown. Uh, Pastor Winfield, we thank you very much for your call. Is going to call Beverly Gray. Pastor, get your members on the phone right now. Tell your members to call in. Call in. Thank you, Pastor Winfield. Pastor Winfield has a show on yes. also, I think, right. on Wednesday mm -hmm. night. Yeah. Pastor Winfield, the reality is, if you don't call and support us, we will be off of the air. Yeah. And I told Pastor Winfield about IT. Uh, I want to thank Derek Robinson uh, for calling. Him? He says he will call Council Member Barbara Williams' office. So please, get those calls in right now. The number is 838-0225. I don't see, I don't know if I had any of my members on here, Dave. So those of you who are watching, you, you, I've got a lot of people in the community who say, I watch you every uh, Sunday. I've been blessed by your 3 o'clock okay, show. This is the time I need you guys to call. You guys I need you to support here? this effort to keep us on the air right now. And if oh, your name yeah, has not been me. called, and I've called off other names, I call back and say, you didn't call my name, because I'm going to call your name, because you're supporting us. All right? All right. Um, I want to go over to Sister Renfro, who has a terrific uh, show on. Charles is on the phone calling people to call in. I mean, this is this is the it's this serious. is the real uh, impact of the community. Yes. This is how people really feel right. that right. he is on the phones right now, That's calling right. his friends right. and saying, "Call in, call in." Call. Right. But this young lady here has a show on. Now, I watched the other day. You had a judge on your show. Mm -hmm. There are some people who would have never ever Better been call. able to see Judge Ogden mm -hmm. and to know about her had your show not been on. Mm -hmm. And you also are the head of the police community, Concerned Citizens Against Police Abuse. Abuse. And your show airs. Yes. Talk to me a little bit. I was wondering when you're going to get to I'm me. I'm coming. You're here. There we <laughs> but go. But in, 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 on behalf of, of all of the um, viewers and supporters, I would like to challenge all the ministers mm -hmm. to call themselves. Never mind telling them. Tell the members too, but we want the ministers to call. So you want some ministers. I want you. the ministers. You want more than Reverend Winfield. Exactly. All right. And I also would encourage all organizations people who have been on the show, mm -hmm. victims of police brutality, mm -hmm. families who have people incarcerated. Mm -hmm. This is one TV station that allows me to do yes. my show mm -hmm. just the way I need to do it and to tell it like it is. Let me ask you this, uh, Sister Renfro, has anybody ever looked at your show from this administration and said you can't put on this, you better edit this? No. Out? No. Tell and them the process no, that you it, go through. Um, well, one of the things is that I uh, I tape all over the place and, okay. the, and also to come here. But after the tape is done, Gregory does the taping and mm -hmm. does after everything is done and edited, then it's brought down here mm -hmm. and it's put where it's available, mm -hmm. you know, it's shown where it's available. Um, I've never had a problem. Okay. And um, I like the freedom. Mm -hmm. And I do not pre-rehearse my shows. Mm -hmm. I don't give people scripts. We talk right off the mm -hmm. cuff. And I think it's important. And everybody in Buffalo, I don't care whether you're black, white, green, mm -hmm. or whatever, you need to call because this is election time. Mm -hmm. And yes, some reforms were needed. Yes, they were. But they were you done. Were. But they, they were, were done, done exactly. and they're still in the process yes. of being completed. And we need to understand, especially as African Americans, mm -hmm. that we need something that is unbiased mm -hmm. and that we Everybody can come, does. exactly, yes. that we can come and do our thing, yes. so to speak. Yes. And this way, we've got to protect that right. Yes. And that means that people have got to call. They've got to call They've in got the morning. To, that's right, call tonight here 
call in the morning. Yes. And I think some of the, I think James Pitts, his number is 851 I think five, we have the numbers. Oh, we you have put the up, numbers ready to put up? Put yeah, all do the we numbers almost have the number? We want to get these numbers up. Of all, We don't have them ready. We're going to have them ready okay. in just a minute. I want them to work on these numbers. Okay. okay but I think we have to keep getting involved in all processes. And when our rights are being violated and people are taking things and distorting them and blaming newcomers mm -hmm. for something that happened before, mm -hmm. then we have to remember, we have to educate people. Right. Yep. And I think one of the better things is to have had this tonight right. so that you all explain, you, you and the other two board members explain exactly what happened. And yes, there are mistakes, just like we make mistakes. Every but you get up, regroup yourself, and go you know. forward. You know what, it, 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 what I'm baffled about sometimes is that every, I, I can name the listing of organizations that have made mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, the Catholic Church has someone within its midst mm -hmm. that took money, mm -hmm. but you didn't see all contracts being oh, in yeah. the Catholic Church. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. The city of Buffalo had, I believe it was somebody in the parking section mm -hmm. just putting money in the, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but they never did an audit, and when they found out, you didn't see a public outcry about shut down the city of well, Buffalo. Well, look at the city itself. Well, I mean, there's stuff in every department, mm -hmm. so we cannot allow ourselves yes. to be pigeonholed, yes. to be repressed, yes. and to be denied. I agree. So and if, if we never there, spoke up any time before, we ought to speak you ministers right out there that always speaking from the pulpit? She's on the ministers again. Get on <laughs> your J-O-B. I, I, I totally agree because we have a lot of church programs in, right. and, and they paid nothing, and, mm -hmm. and we're glad you're on. Believe mm -hmm. me, this isn't about knocking the minister because right. I'm one, I love you, but this is about saying if you care, don't don't sit back and then once it's off the air go they did this they did mm -hmm. you've got an opportunity right, right now some of these some of these persons who will be voting on the floor tomorrow you had them in your church right. they stood on your floors they gave spills to your people now we need you to call that marker and say listen if if they had some problems with an employee and an employee not a board member i need you to understand this public the board members did not take anything right. we found out about it now was there some some legitimate uh, mistake of the board? Sure. The mistake was that we trusted certain people to be doing certain things and it wasn't being done. When we found out about it, it we ordered an audit. Mm -hmm. So we don't feel that we need to be penalized to the point that the city of Buffalo, because a person is suspected, again, you are innocent until what is it? Proven, proven guilty. guilty. And I'm so tired of people saying, I know this person did it. You don't know anything. Mm -hmm. The auditor's report will come out and the district attorney will say who did what. If someone did wrong, hey, that's up to the district attorney. But I'm not here to slander Anybody. Exactly. Anybody though. We don't want to we got enough of that in our community. That's right. People pointing fingers. I want to thank some callers. And give me let me give you that number again. 838-0225. Call us. We got some challenges here. And finally, I see a true Bethel name. We have what do you think this says? Marjorie Billups. And I think Billups is if I'm I'm assuming probably Marjorie. from Marjorie Wong, from the Billups family. Look, <laughs> Billups family, get on the phone. Your family is big enough. Call yeah, us. You got 900. You got, you got 900 <laughs> folks in the Billups family. I want to hear some more Billups from the university district. Got uh, Gloria P.A. from True Bethel Baptist Church calling from the Maston District. Essie Brock from True Bethel. Now you're, now you're watching your pastor. Ellicott District. Um, we have McClure. McClure. Tell it to me. Uh, from the Fillmore District. I'm sorry if I messed that up, but you're from the Fillmore District. Please make those calls in the morning, 9 to 10 o'clock in the morning. We got Maddie Foster from the Maston District. We got Geraldine Daniels, Fillmore. Thank you, Sister Fillmore. Daniels. De bro. Definitely. Definitely. Got to call Friends Act. We love Friends Act. We put them in office, but we want them to support our community concerns. Mm -hmm. Edward and Riola Wiley, another true brother. Edward's been working over at our new building every day. Donna Smith from the Maston District. Give us a call here, 838-0225. Want to remind you that at 9 a.m., we will be on radio station WUFO 1080 on your AM dial to talk about this issue again. And at nine o'clock in the morning on WUFO to talk about this issue again. Let me read some of these other shows that are on. We got God's Trombone uh, that comes on on Wednesday night. The St. John Hour again. Jesus is Alive. Charging the Year 2000. Voices of Praise. Let My People Know. This is our Wednesday lineup. It's Time to Wake Up. 
Uh, he is sovereign. Try Jesus, Church of God in Christ. The whole truth. Friday nights, we got Pee Wee Show. Those of you who know Pee Wee, does that community show. Pee Wee is something else. <laughs> Pee Wee uh, was on Sunday. And Pee Wee talked about how he is a recovering uh, alcoholic. Mm. Do you understand that this place gives people who would not, he can't go to a channel exactly. 2. Yeah. He can't go to a channel 4. He, right. he can't even go to Wolf or right. be okay because he can't afford the airtime. But he can come here yeah. for free. Mm -hmm. Talk to people who are in the streets. Talk to youth who are in the streets. Mm -hmm. And and make a difference. So Pee Wee Show, thank you Pee Wee for mm -hmm. coming and being with my too, <laughs> for coming and being with us. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that the person who has joined us now is a person, and I need to say this, and I never want to lose him to any of the big networks, and I never want to lose uh, <laughs> Kyle Dukes to any of the big networks. I don't want to lose them. But they are the technical people who have kept this show on the air. Kyle Dukes, uh, Dwayne Terry, who else Dwayne has been? Uh, John Jordan. John Jordan, and John Jordan is in a wheelchair, but let me tell you something, he's not he's handicapped. Great. John yeah. Jordan gets around this place like nobody's like business. He, he has helped us keep on. Who else has helped us? Um, uh, Jimmy Greg, Green Jr. Jimmy Green Jr. Mm -hmm. We have Greg Barber. Yes, sir. We had, um, who else? Uh, Kenny Mitchell. Kenny Mitchell's been coming in. Uh, who else? Uh, Earl Robeson, and who Earl else? Robeson. Uh, Jay Younger. Yes. Um, All these guys. But yeah. show them the money. The, yes. And what's <laughs> happening, though, is these guys, including Dwayne, has been, have been working for free. When you see a tape go over the air, your tape, your pastor, your community group, whatever, your he's show. running it. They've got to run this thing, and they're not getting paid. We need that money to be released so at least we can pay these guys That's right. for the back. Talk to me, because you have a show on. Yes, I have a show called Buff uh, Buffalo at Large, and mm -hmm. I also have a show called Late Night Noise. And if anyone's out there from Late Night Noise watching, you know how we do it. We ask you to call in all the time. Oh, what's Late Night Noise? Sir? Late Night Noise comes <laughs> on. Larry just said, you know how we do it. <laughs> <laughs> Late Night Noise is a uh, music video show geared toward mm -hmm. the younger audience. We play mostly rap videos, but we also have a live audience. We have a live show. Mm -hmm. It's live every Friday night from 11 to 1. Mm -hmm. We really try to push the envelope by doing things that people really haven't done before, and, we, and I'm thankful that here at Public Access, I got the chance to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, we ask, we throw live effects in, we have guests come in live, we have a live audience. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in one room uh, rolling videos and I have a crew in, an, uh, in the audience out here in the stage. Mm -hmm. so we actually, we use two rooms simultaneously mm -hmm. and we flip back and forth and we go split screen. Mm -hmm. we, we have a lot of fun, we experiment and we try to push it, we, what we call it, pushing the envelope. Mm -hmm. Every time we find that there's a, a possibility that we can do something new, mm -hmm. we try it and we mm -hmm. try it live. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's, every once in a while we have a few mistakes, but that's, that comes with a live show. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And live show, you can't, you can't hide your mistakes mm -hmm. when you're live. It's either go with the flow or you don't. So we really have a lot of fun and we have a lot of people watching our show. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, it is not any place that I can't go right now mm -hmm. where I can ask someone, have you seen the show? And they say, no, I haven't seen it. We Everywhere we go, someone people are watching the show. Mm -hmm. And I want them people to know that this show is important to us, and I know it's important to you, too, because we have a lot of fun. We play the best rap videos. Mm -hmm. We have we have Atlanta, yeah, we, the best. And we have live guests. Mm -hmm. We have guests. We had Beverly Gray, James Pitts. We had Mr. Larry Falzone. Or was it Mike Falzone? Larry Falzone? Mr. Falzone, who's running for city court judge. Mm -hmm. We had a host of people come down from from different programs who have di different programs geared towards the youth and we do a live interview and they come down they have fun the studios sometimes full with people and they mm -hmm. watch videos they laugh they joke I mean it's one of the one of the most exciting shows I think on Friday night mm -hmm. after days and I gotta give David all the credit because David inspired that show mm -hmm. you know David gets a lot of videos and his, and his show was kind of maxed out at the videos he can play and I realized there was another audience that wasn't being catered to mm -hmm. and that was the younger audience and I wanted to put together a show that would cater to that younger audience and give them what a lot of stations just to totally ignore them because mm -hmm. they're afraid of the Can the you genre. challenge them to call that number? Yes, anyone from Late Night Noise, please call the number 838 There we go. Say it again. Oh. Tell them. 838 You know on Late Night Noise we try to do a lot of things. we got a lot of events we try to promote. We try to get people to come out and have fun with us. But without Late Night Noise here on Channel 18, it won't be possible. So we have to, you have to call in. Now actually what you have to do is call your council, your council person. person. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning between yes. the times nine, of nine, nine, and ten. nine and ten and tell them. We don't want it to we go. We don't want it to go. We love public access. We love late night noise. We want it to stay. And it's really important. I'm asking anyone who's watched the show. And I, and I, I, I 
with God is my witness, we get almost 30 to 40 calls a night. Mm -hmm. We know our audience is tuned in. We know they like to, like to call in. And so I need you to call in now. Now is the most important time to call in tomorrow to your council member and let them know that you don't want to see public access disrupted. You don't want to see late night noise go off the air. So call, make those calls tomorrow. It's very, very, very important. We'll thank you on late night noise. We'll thank you here at BCTV. I thank you. I think we all thank you. Yeah. Right, exactly. And, and I called Dwayne like today to do this <laughs> live shoot. It was like, we're going to do this. Um, we, we, I have a message here that Council Member Williams wants to come down to the studio. Council Member Williams, actually we're doing a wrap, I think in about 10 minutes. Is that true? 15. Can Can we get her on the phone? Um, if Council Member Williams, if we can get you on the phone, I will put you over the air live. Please call us back, Council Member Williams. Um, I want to thank, she's on the phone now. Can we try to patch her through? All right, he's going to go out to hook her up. John is going to start making his way in. I want to thank Shara Israel from the Maston District who will be calling. Where am I at, guys? Give me a hand. Where am I at? Over on one. All right, I want to thank Shara Israel from the Maston District for calling. I want to thank Shara Hutchins from the Maston District. Call your councilman shower nine in the morning I want to thank Faith Jackson from the University District thank you for your call please don't forget don't oversleep don't don't yeah, forget set your please alarm. call set your alarm clock I'll call you Danny Jackson from the University District I want to thank Al from Al's unisex salon on Genesee Street uh, a young entrepreneur I want to thank you Al for calling in young business brothers understand you can do things here on BCTV <laughs> and this is not about not I know and let me just say the issue I know that there's a lot of African Americans but this station caters to everyone. Right. I don't care if you're Irish, Catholic, it doesn't matter. Polish. Public access mm -hmm. is for you. This for you. Thank you, Al, for calling. I want to thank Chief Paul is going to call the Maston District in between 9 and 10 o'clock in the morning. I want to thank Levine Evans from the University District for calling in. Thank you, Levine, for your call. I want to thank Monty, Al what is this, Aladdin Dry Cleaners, another business person. Oh, sure. Thank you, Aladdin. And, and somebody take some clothes over here. We can't advertise. No, yeah. <laughs> so, but it thank you. Hey, Reverend yeah. Lewis from the True Belt. Uh, you know what, preachers, pastors, I want to see you calling in. We've got your shows on the air and some of you have benefited. You've gotten members because they were able to see your shows. Right. Now, right. some of you members, you need to be calling in because the reality is some of your members have come because they have seen mm -hmm. your pastor on the air. Come on, pastors. I only got one pastor thus far that has called me. Brother Helene. Brother Helene. Yeah. Uh, anybody from the mosque. Brother Helene has been a great supporter. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. uh, he has a Randall. show on here that's right. great. Everybody that Minister has a Farrakhan. show. Yes, everybody. everybody. Um, he's Reverend Lewis going to call the Fillmore District. Please don't forget. And we're trying to get Council Member uh, Miller uh, Williams uh, on the line live. Um, and anybody else who wants to call any other council Pitts. person. Pitts. Uh, Pitts. Pitts. Get on the line. You're running for he's mayor. Been very, but he's been very supportive of, of and, our and efforts. We, so. we must say that mm -hmm. he's been very yes. supportive to our cause here. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a lot of people, when they turn their nose up at us. Mm -hmm. He's been one of the persons. Also, mm -hmm. Beverly Gray. Right. Oh, okay. yeah. She's, yeah. Wait, wait a minute. I think we got some audio problems we're just trying to fix. Um, you're right about, now let me say this, and I'm not trying to defend the, the council president, but there were some reports that got out that said that he had influenced the board to hire certain people, and uh, unfortunately I was one, or fortunately whomever, I was one of the uh, council appointees, and I can say that this man has never called me, he never called me on the phone until I started calling him about this situation, mm -hmm. to say that I needed to, that we needed to hire uh, a certain person. That has never, ever happened, erroneous information. Do we have the feed in now from Barbara? In August, Barbara. Barbara. Hello. Hi, uh, Councilman. I'm sorry, I didn't mean Barbara. Councilwoman. Hi. Hi. How are you? Thank you for calling, Council. Yeah, person. Hi, Barbara. Hi. Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to call in to just touch bases with you to uh, let you know that public access is truly it's important for the city of Buffalo for the community residents because without this avenue, we don't have another way so that we can make sure that the residents can be heard throughout the city of Buffalo. I want to commend the board on its efforts to keep the uh, BCTV afloat and just to expound how we can uh, continue to look at the past and, and some of the things that occur, we must move forward. It's important that we allocate the funds to get the staff paid. I mean, you were talking about individuals that haven't been paid for three months. Yeah. Uh, we have to move forward and we have to make sure that BCTV stays on the air. So I just wanted to call in to make a point that it's important not only to have the listeners call our office 
offices in the morning, but to come down tomorrow right. at okay. 2 p.m. as well. We need to see the residents in that audience, in the chambers, with us tomorrow at 2 p.m. That's on the 13th floor of City Hall, so that at that point in time, they can witness firsthand what their legislators are doing about keeping this public asset right. on the air. So the, the meeting tomorrow is at 2 o'clock? It's at 2 o'clock in the council chamber. Now, Barbara, what I want, and, and uh, council member, I'm very sorry, the council member, what I want, and thank you for sending out that challenge, I will be sitting in the council chambers tomorrow at 2. Anyone who is in support of of public access. If you can take the hour to come down, sometimes the meeting runs for two hours, if you can come and wherever I'm seated, just come and sit around me so that we can show community support to keep this station on the air. Council member, I believe that someone was just talking about uh, producing a show with you on it. Uh, and I, I don't know if you have a show on already, do you? No, but we have one that's forthcoming, myself and Council member Brown. It's ironic that we're just in the motion. This week we're going to be filming with um, Greg and so you know, I'm very disappointed about what's going on because this would have provided, and it will provide an avenue for us as well to basically showcase some of the things that are going on in Ellicott and Mastin. Yes. So we're just about to come on the air, and that's why it's important to keep BCTV afloat because it does provide that avenue for those of us yes. who don't have the dollars, et cetera, to get our message across on a, a wide basis. Well, we thank you very much for your call, and I want to give that number again. It is 838 Five. We're sorry we're not able to put everyone over the air live, but we will put any of our council persons who call over. We're almost out of time. We're down to like the last few minutes, but I want to thank Margaret Jackson from the University District. Great. Thank you, Sister Marguerite. Jackson. Yep. Is, is, that's Marguerite, Marguerite from the University. You remember? Be a Marguerite tomorrow. You want her to be there. Be there. I want to see you there Gibson, tomorrow. Uh, Common Council. Jackson, all you community activists. Act out on awesome, Common awesome. Council yeah, I like tomorrow. To, I like mm -hmm. to say this too. Let me let me get these names. I want uh, Tequila Smith from the University District, and and then probably well, you know, I've got to say probably the prettiest lady in Buffalo. My wife called. I mean, you know, that's you know that's that's, that's support. So yeah, I mean, you know, she's home with the kids, and I'm here trying to keep a station mm -hmm. on the air. And pastors, I still have. Oh yes, I do. Before I say it, Reverend Benny Savage. Thank you. Where am I at? I'm here. Thank you, uh, Reverend Savage. From is going to call the Masson District ministers. I don't think that. That you understand how much of an impact you have on the decisions that are made downtown. I want to thank Reverend William Gillison and the Baptist Ministers Alliance. Mm -hmm. They sent a letter of support and also have pledged support. But understand your support is needed on the phone tomorrow in between 9 and 10 and your support is needed in the council chambers in City Hall mm -hmm. tomorrow at the 2 o'clock hour. Some of you who work downtown just take your lunch break one day at right. 2 o'clock. Even if you cannot stay come and show that support um, yes sir now what I was gonna say is now the local groups here in the city of Buffalo um, really never had an outlet to showcase their talent until mm -hmm. my show and also Dwayne Terry show has come along now you should show your support tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Come down to City Council Chambers at 2 o'clock tomorrow. 13th floor. 13th floor. 13th floor. And, and show your support because mm -hmm. without shows like Late Night Noise and the David Allen mm -hmm. show, you won't be seen. All right. You hear them tomorrow. That Now, we, we asked you to call, and the council member is the one who called and said, come down. So you have an invitation mm -hmm. from the council person to come down. Now, tomorrow I might not be in a, a suit, but you'll know who I am. I'm the funny-looking guy. I'll be sitting over in the corner somewhere. Come over. Sit around us. Support Channel 18 staying on the air. Um, I think John is coming out. John uh, has a program on. I don't know if he can get away uh, from the TV. Do we have those phone numbers right ready yet? Um, I'm not sure if we have the phone numbers of the council persons uh, ready, but if we don't, let me give you the number again to call, 838-0225. If you don't know your council person's number, you can call the operator, you can look in the phone book, but please, those of you who have committed to call, please call. I know that there's people who are watching who are not calling us here, but you have intentions of calling. Please call, and don't forget to listen to us tomorrow, and I'm going to come right to you at 9 a.m., 1080 AM WFO. Yes, ma'am. And also challenge the senior citizens who are sick and unable to come to church. Mm -hmm. 
to call because they're watching their ministers mm -hmm. on the TV. Mm -hmm. And you have nothing to do tomorrow except sit there and dial the phone number, and dial your right. friends and tell them to tell call. Them to call. We've got to stick together on this. And if they've got like three people in the house, hit redial. That's right. If you yeah. got three voting people in your house, hit redial hit and redial call back. Anyhow. Keep on calling. Keep <laughs> listen, now I'm calling this my husband call. Oh my goodness, right. the list is growing. Look, that's that's mom. Look, yeah. look, uh, I want to thank uh, Leticia Davis from Maston. And you can tell I got like this strong support at home. Uh, uh, Barbara Pridgen, thank you very much. Francis Johnson, Donna Johnson. This is one of the most directing dynamos in the city of Buffalo. Thank you. Uh, Gail Parks for calling. Rodney Johnson for calling. Uh, Shirley Johnson. We're just going to get your names now because uh, we need to just get your names and we're running out of time. I want to thank Cassandra McCoy, Kendrick Wright. I want to thank Marquita Johnson. Uh, Earl Pridgen, great. Uh, uh, Cray Wilkinson. Uh, Lou Agnew for calling. Uh, Marilyn Millinder, thank you very much. Chris and Chris uh, Mueller, it looks like, for calling. I want you to call that number. We're running out of time. Call somebody. I believe we're only down to eight minutes. Call somebody. Have them call us here real quick in the studio. 838-0225. We're down to 10 minutes. Yes, Charles? Yeah, also I saw in a paper that uh, the mayor had a, had a comment concerning, so I think that we should get behind um, some of these other political figures. Even, yes. even the godfather, Arthur Eve, needs to be called in, in concerning this. Sure. Issue. Because back in the old days of Sunship, we did quite a bit of work for mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever, you know, the wise old Negro, Arthur Eve, wanted something done through... Charles, uh, Charles. Uh, that's Charles that's, now. That's right. That's <laughs> me. Say, that's right. Charles. <laughs> that's right. And we, you know, we did what we had to do because mm -hmm. he looked out for us. Right. And now this is a situation where, you know, this this facility is for everyone, even Tony Maffiello, you right. know, whatever the case may be, right. you know, who's running for office. Oh, Charles. Put them all in right. There, so. Well, I, I definitely agree with Charles. We need everyone to be called. We do need Arthur Eve to call. We do need uh, you to call your man. The legislators. Right. Right. All these doctors, people, there you go. All you police vic brutality victims, now you've been on the show several times. Get on here and call. Call, call. 838-0225. 838-0225 is our like, studio. Like we said before, you know, we need to show faces. We need numbers. Right. Okay? Yes. Calling is fine, but if you can, if you don't have anything to do tomorrow, come down tomorrow. Come down to the council chambers, two o'clock. Mm -hmm. Is it thirteenth floor? I better write it down yeah. so I make sure I'm on the right floor. You know, yes, um, and, and make make your presence felt. Yes, mm -hmm. okay, and, and be there. Yes, mm -hmm. you don't realize what will it be if it's not here. Yes, right. yes. once it's gone, it's gone. Yes, right. two years is too long not to have the David. Two days is too long. Noise. Two days or because it's two days. Now, two days oh, might end up being. Right. Look, I've got I've got another great producer here, great cameraman. Yeah. He's coming off the camera. Talk My to us. Cameraman. Talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's your cameraman. <laughs> ah, that's why you're so passionate. Peace and love, folks. Uh, one of the things that people don't understand about public access is the only cost that you actually pay or incur mm -hmm. as an organization or individual is the production cost. Mm -hmm. uh, the cost to put a program on on least access, which is channel 10 and channel 21, as David uh, said before, was $150 for one half hour. Mm -hmm. A lot of the programs that we have on this station are one hour, mm -hmm. which means that it is, and, and the 150 is the minimal cost. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, a higher cost during prime time is 250 for a half hour. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're on between 12 p.m. and 6 p.m., you're paying for an hour long show, it's $500. Mm -hmm. If you're on from 6 p.m. until midnight, you're paying $700 for a one hour program. Now, I don't know about wow. your organization, okay? <laughs> but I, as a producer, will still charge you the production cost. Mm -hmm. And then you have to incur that additional cost. Oh, okay. That's what makes public access so important to people. It's something that Congress passed in the 1990 uh, Communications Act that said that uh, cable stations, cable networks have to offer only least access. They don't have to offer mm. public access, okay? Mm -hmm. That's real important. So that's people, not the law where right, some people think. Right. right. Public access in Buffalo is mandated by the City of Buffalo contract with TCI. It's not mandated mm -hmm. by federal law. Mm -hmm. So they can take this off and then the money that TCI gives to the um, to the city to give mm -hmm. to public access will be a savings to mm -hmm. TCI. Mm -hmm. Now we all know that you can be watching TV all night and not see a daggone thing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. 
Public access allows the public an opportunity to put on things that they think need to be on television. Mm, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right? Yes, sir. That's what it's there for. It's not there for, for me as a producer. It's there for the public. Mm -hmm. All that we do is ensure that mm -hmm. it's of some quality mm -hmm. before it goes on the air. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. And if you have noticed that of late, the programs have been getting better and better yes. Mm -hmm. yes. because we, the volunteers around here, are working very diligently with the other producers, the newer producers, to help them improve mm -hmm. the quality of their programs. Mm -hmm. Now, I personally don't have a regularly scheduled program, but I do a number of programs. Here I do um, Pentecostal Temple with my mm -hmm. wife. Mm -hmm. I do um, Speak Out for Loretta. Mm -hmm. I do the um, Nickel City Live. Wow. Uh, I do a number of things that just in what's called standby. Mm -hmm. So if a producer doesn't hand in a tape, mm -hmm. they pull something from the standby mm -hmm. group and they put it on the air. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I know I've done 31 shows for Loretta. Wow. Already. Okay. And how long has Loretta been on there? Since March of last year. Let me get his number because I don't hear the phones ringing, which means you can call right now. 838-0225. 838-0225. We are live in the studio. We are winding down to about the last three minutes. I want to get you on the air two o'clock tomorrow in the chambers. Go ahead. See, and what you can do is if your organization has something that's going on, you can call the station. They will assign one of the volunteer uh, producers to go out and talk to the people to get the production done. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow night, I'm scheduled to do a production here with the all market people. Mm -hmm. Okay. The people who want to put a supermarket on the corner of Ferry yep. and Fillmore. Yep. All right. Yeah. Very important project. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for public access, they would not be able to get that on. Now, Channel 10 and Channel 21 are cheap. Right. If you want to put something on one of the one of the commercial stations, you're talking five thousand dollars. So those of you who okay. we, we're down to like two minutes those of you who are watching right now and you have been affected by public access TV I need you to call your council member tomorrow I need you to call the council president tomorrow I need you to call us 838-0225 when we go off the air we'll be leaving the studio if you're not able to call Please, please meet us tomorrow at the Common Council building at City Hall on the 13th floor, 2 p.m. It starts. Be there, please. Bring your grandchildren, bring whoever you have to to Let's fill that place it. up. Let's pack go in there and show that the public means what they are saying. The number, 838-0225. You all better check that phone line. Maybe it's not hung up. <laughs> I don't hear you calling. Call me. We've got two minutes. We're down to two. There we go. There's the phone. Whoever that one person is, I want you to come in right away and tell me because I thank you for calling. I thank you. Those of you who are going to call the Fillmore, Maston District, Fillmore, uh, what are the other districts? Um, University, Ellicott. Uh, all Love these districts. Love all Joy. Love Joy. Call. I haven't heard one Niagara. person from Love Joy. And Love Joy, you got a lot of shows on and here. And Maple you need Ridge, y'all better call. That's right. You need to call your councilman in the morning, 9 to 10. Tune in to 1080 WUFO AM in the morning. I'll be on there live again in the morning, 1080 AM. I'm going to be asking you to do the same thing, is to call me in the morning and then I'm going to ask you to call right away. So if you think you'll forget, leave your radio station on the morning at 1080 so you can hear us go live in the morning on Wuffle. And, where is, and set your alarm. Where is the Urban League? Come on, Urban the League. The NAACP? Yes. Southern Leader um, Christian um, Conference? Yes. Leader, whatever that is. Call. call All us. of you need to call. That's it. It's no Every one of them have programs. It, does, it, it yes. doesn't matter, yes. but they've all watched. That's Anybody right. Anybody who has watched this program, watch any program on public access, call. That's all Mar you have to do. Mary Davis has a show on Nation of Islam, That's Buffalo right. at Large, uh, Just Buffalo, Irish Eyes, um, Axel Grease, Thunderbird Theater. You guys ever seen the guy with the ski mask? People go, what a silly show. Yeah. But guess what? It's, it's a, a great show because it is his expression of how he feels. Oh, and right. you need to know how your neighbors feel, whether you like it or not. All We've right. got to get ready to wrap up. I want to thank the volunteer crew who is here right now who have not been paid. I want to ask the Common Council to please release those funds on tomorrow. Release those funds that this station may stay on air. If not, we will be off the air. I want to thank you very thank much. You. See Bye. you in the morning. Bye-bye.